So when you talk about the group mind, you're not thinking of the group as a single conscious entity with a self-consciousness. No, with with the group mind, I think it is. Uh -huh. Yes. I was thinking more of the inert the, things, okay. like, like matter. Yeah. No, I think that group mind, uh, there is a kind of a central uh, coherence that is like a personality. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do really believe that. With a consciousness of itself. Yes. Independent of any of the members of the group. That's right. I, th I think so. Uh -huh. uh, but it's very basic in terms of self-consciousness. I think the self-consciousness of the group is often really primitive. Yeah. Not developed at all like it is in individual human beings. Well, if you look at um, the history of God, for example, I believe uh, it was Karen Armstrong or some other writer who treats God as a historical figure. God behaves in, in, uh, in the Bible as kind of uh, uh, an immature child. Okay. To be, and, you know, with God is not necessarily uh, as evolved as some of the most evolved members of society. Well, this is a very interesting <laughs> question that you're bringing up here because it touches upon a notion of evolution, uh -huh. which is called evolutionary panentheism, mm -hmm. that sees the whole universe coming into being as the coming into being of God. Yes. And, of course, that means that God has various stages mm -hmm. of evolution yeah. from less uh, developed in certain ways to more developed. Mm -hmm. I think that's... I'm get, that's sort of my thinking. I yeah. think if I were to probe my own ideas deeply, I would, I would say that uh, God needs us as much as we need God. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes I, I, have, uh, I, I think that that idea has a lot of merit. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Um, and I guess maybe I've revealed more about my own thinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right good. Yeah. I enjoy that. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes, well, I think we all have our we all have our visions of reality, mm -hmm. and sometimes by talking, we we come to see yeah. them more and more clearly. We have them, mm -hmm. and they affect us, but we don't yeah. always are not always aware of them in their details. Well, this brings us back to the the uh, remark I made at the beginning of our discussion about Emil Durkheim and his yes. notion that the, the, these are what the gods are of each culture is the projection of the group mind. Yes. So you get a yes. sense of the maturity of the group as a whole by understanding uh, their deities. Yes. Yes, I, and I think that is very true. Mm -hmm. And those deities are going to be indi very individual. They're not going to be the same in Australia as they are in, uh, in uh, let's say, Africa. Yeah. So it's very culturally formed. Mm -hmm. And then there's always the, the question, which to me as a parapsychologist is of great interest, is to what extent do these deities have an autonomous existence, independent of how we characterize them? Yes, well, I, that's a very interesting question, too. And, of course, the theosophists talked about that question. Yeah. And when they talked about thought form and, mm -hmm. and thought forms being able to become uh, individual entities, and that they, I believe that at least some of their writings uh, imply that the gods are thought forms mm -hmm. which have become concrete in a particular yeah. place. Well, you're reminding me of an essay I read by Carl Jung, the great Swiss psychiatrist, yes. who back in the early 1930s noticed uh, the dreams of his German patients were um, the, the imagery of the uh, ancient Teutonic god of war, Wotan, uh, kept coming in, in these dreams and so he said Wotan is rising in the consciousness of the people and that means uh, he predicted we're on the brink of war. Right, yes. Yes, he had he had a remarkable take on reality, Carl yeah. Jung. I, yeah. I think that uh, we are have yet to understand the depth of his understanding, mm -hmm. of his view of reality, of his vision. Yeah. With but, the notion of the, yes. Well, well, I suppose, really, you can draw a great deal on Jungian depth psychology to try to elucidate the features of a group mind. Well, you can, very definitely. With the notion of the collective unconscious, it has a place in understanding group mind.